Hi everybody, welcome back to Project Spatial. I'm Katie Scheuer and I'm here to increase your spatial impact. Now, today I'm talking about GIS developers and GIS specialists, and I grouped these guys together because they're very technical positions, they're specialized positions, and you may or may not have them in your typical GIS group. Um, but a lot of times they are used in other industries that impact the GIS industry and are used to kind of create applications and really enhance another technical position. So if you like this video, you should check out these videos that I have here. Um, this is part of a series and so we will have one more coming out after this um, and all the links will be down in the description below. So GIS developers and programmers, I'm kind of putting them together in one, um, they are really the coders of GIS. So if you love getting into Python or R or Pandas, all of that, um, and you really enjoy the coding portion of it, then you probably wanna dig into the GIS developer and programmer. Now I will put a caveat onto that. Um, if you are going into that, you might end up just being a software developer or a software engineer or you know, somewhere in there with just kind of a general programmer. And then you will have portions of your position where you will deal with GIS data. So there's kind of like a blend between the two, uh, depending on what your title is and depending on what company you work for will depend how much spatial data you're working with and kind of how it all works out. So just realize that there is some blend in there just because you might be just a software programmer doesn't necessarily mean that you're not going to be dealing with GIS data. Um, and just because you're a GIS programmer doesn't mean that you're going to not be doing other programming. <laughs> really kind of work between the different job titles and be more focused on the job description when you're trying to find the right fit for you. So typically uh, GIS programmers or developers are people that are fitting into stage three of the GIS structure. So these are people that are going to be helping with integration and are going to really kind of make the most of all the tools that you have and potentially customize something for your company or customize something for your industry that is going to enhance what we already have available. A lot of times these people are also working on tools and specialized analysis that maybe your engineer can just come in and do one little click of a button and then all of a sudden they have this whole analysis that runs for them and they were able to get the answer that they need. Now a developer's on the other side of that trying to figure out the math, trying to figure out the spatial component to all of that make sure that it's visual and make sure that it's available to that person when they need it. So these are all very specialized skills that you need an understanding of the industry that you're working in because you need to understand the practical aspects of what you're programming, but you also want to understand all of the technical portions. So you need to have that math, you need to have statistics, you need to have coding and language knowledge. Um, if you don't have all of that, you're really not going to be able to work in this specialized area. So speaking of specialists, uh, GIS specialists are people that are specialized in a particular part of their industry. So they either have a lot of domain knowledge and that's how they're specialized, or they work on a very particular portion of GIS analysis. So this could be like a GIS data scientist um, or somebody that's you know involved in AI, machine learning, all of those sorts of things. But it also could just be somebody that has a very specialized task within their organization and that is what they focus on and that is what they get great at. So a GIS specialist is going to fit into stages three and four because obviously they are going to be doing a little bit more analysis analysis versus the programming side, but typically a GIS specialist, to become a specialist, you need to know code as well. So these are the very heavy tech positions that you're going to need some coding skills, you're going to need some statistic skills, math skills, all of those things to be able to really know your industry well and to really become specialized. So obviously, 
Most of these are not going to be your entry level position. As we talked before, a GIS tech will be a GIS entry level position. Um, now you can come in as an analyst sometimes because you have that data analyst background or that's the training that you did. So you were able to get in as a GIS analyst from the start. But when we're really, really looking at the GIS structure and the five stages of GIS, um, these positions are not going to be your entry level positions. Uh, these are going to be people that have been in an industry, have you know five, three to five years of experience and are able to really jump in and add a lot of value very quickly to their position. If you guys are getting value out of this, please make sure to give this video a like and subscribe down below because I have a bunch more videos coming out and I'd love to see you back. So the big value that you get out of being in these positions and the real value that you bring to the company is being able to have all of that knowledge that you are bringing to them. You are going to be able to jump into your position and learn a little bit and learn along the way, but you're really going to be able to give them value. So when you're looking at these positions, make sure that you're enhancing that, show them projects that you've done, show them code that you've written, show them the way that you think through a problem. These things are extremely important at this stage because they are hiring you to solve their problems. They are hiring you to build a custom application, to do a specialized analysis for them. They want you to solve the big problems and work on the big issues that they have for their company. So if you're not able to structure a problem, if you're not able to communicate your results with them, which listen, that is key. If you can't communicate your results, they don't care. So make sure you emphasize all of those things in your interview and in your portfolio. These are where a digital portfolio can be extremely valuable to you because you're able to show them your code, you're able to show them the visual results from your analysis and walk them through your thinking process, walk them through the process of a problem. Ask them in an interview, what are, what am I going to be working on? What projects do you have? What's the most pressing issue that you have right now that I could immediately contribute to? And if they're not sure, try to get some kind of topic in the industry that you kind of have in the back of your mind and then present a solution to that problem that you know is common in that industry. If you do these kinds of things, you are for sure going to be able to nail that job interview and get that position. So if you're looking into these type of positions, what kind of salaries can you expect to get? Normally these are going to be a little bit more and because these titles fluctuate a lot amongst industries, um, different industries are going to pay more for a particular specialization. So for a GIS specialist to start out, the average is 58,000 um, with range from 41,000 to 83,000. Now these are from Glassdoor and while Glassdoor is great, these are national averages. So you have to make sure that you are looking for the particular salary in your area. Now for a GIS developer, the average is a little bit higher at 78,000 and with an average fluctuation between 54,000 and 113,000. Now, why is there such a big difference between a specialist and a developer when in a lot of ways you're using very similar skills, just in a slightly different way? Well, developers are a much closer job position to a normal tech position. And IT has been around for a long time and these positions have been able to grow and show their value to companies and therefore they have a little bit higher salaries. So to get a GIS developer, somebody that is specially, specializing in GIS and writing code and programming those applications that we are using, they are going to have a little bit higher salary where a GIS specialist is kind of an over encompassing position description. Um, so you can have anything from a data scientist really that is dealing with very high level things to somebody that's specialized in their industry, which might be a lower paying industry. So I hope this cleared up a little bit about these different positions and kind of some of the mid-level advancements that you can have within GIS. And if you liked this video, make sure you check out these videos next. Bye.